It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Welcome back here to the 2024 U Sports Men's National Basketball Event at Laval University. We're now to the evening session of games here and how this plays out. He's Greg Campbell and Mo Khan. We got the host Laval Rougeur taking on the University of Victoria Vikings and what on paper seems like it's a mismatch in terms of David versus Goliath. Talk about this game here, Greg, how this plays out because we have two teams opposite directions going at it today. I mean, they're opposite teams in terms of their standings and where they come in, perceived coming into this tournament. But talking to both head coaches before this game, they just said when the whistle blows, it's basketball at the end of the day. Every team that's here deserves to be for one reason or another. They said simply both teams are excited that the fact that there's an atmosphere. He says it doesn't matter who you cheer for at the end of the day. I mean, it's a game of basketball. It's a celebration of the university sport here in Canada. So, you know, it's a number one versus an eight, a David versus a Goliath. But at the end of the day, I mean, the Laval's got the home crowd on their side. The question is, can they stop the Mafia attack, which is Diego Mafia and Elias Ralph, the one-two punch for the Vikes. Of course, then you took it, you talk about this Laval Rougeur team. Again, they snuck into the playoffs as the fourth seed in the Quebec Conference. Uh, we're one and done. We're taken out by Concordia. So they have a layoff here, but for Uvic, they went through the meek run of the Count West with what they had to do to become the Count West champions. Well, I mean, if you look at it, look at the Ottawa GGs in the first game we saw today already. I mean, that ring rust, it wears off fairly quickly, and it's been a battle of attrition in the first two matchups we've seen so far. But you look at the other side of the Victoria Vikes, I mean, the presum presumable favorites coming into the tournament. Number one, they defeat the Winnipeg Westman in the Can West Finals. But the key for this team, especially in a game like this, in a hostile environment on the road, despite having the experience, having played in Winnipeg, playing SFX in the semifinals last year, is how fast a start can they get off to? Well, we're up next year. Laval, Uvic here from St. Foy, Quebec. Stay tuned for the 2024 Men's Nationals presented by Michelob Light. You're watching this on CBC Sports. Feel every hit, point, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the semaine of the collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories, 
CBC Sports, just because they love it. Welcome back. Let's send out to Mark Antoine Garapi with the starting lineups for you, Vic and Laval. Quebec is the 2024 U Sports Men's National Championship presented by Green Shield. Here from Laval, Quebec, is the host Laval Major against the U Big Vikings. It is West Coast against the Quebec Capital and this lovely box here. All right, great. Victoria, a team that was blistering all throughout the regular season. Diego Mafia is mad that you have to look at. And also, you have to look at the fact that Craig Bocamp was in Coach of the Year in U Sports. They have all the accolades, but the one that's losing it is the national title. Well, and it starts in this match here. A test right off the bat against the host. But this guy averages, Diego Mafia, the senior, averages just a hair under 27 points per game. That's good for first and total points. That's good for average per game. I mean, you've never seen this guy play before. He does not matter. I, I want to call it the Curry effect. It does not matter how many times he misses. This guy will shoot and shoot, and the volume will add up. And here is Sidney Tommy Lacombe to get this underway for this matchup. Laval, they went 6-10 and 10 during the RS RSEQ season. Victoria is 17-13 and 13 in the very rugged Can West, the number one seed at that pace. Duth swung out. And the first error by Laval, they hit about 18 and a half turnovers per game. Four times they had 26 or more in a matchup. And four and four at home this season. So just like the Ottawa GG's couple weeks off here after being bounced out in the semifinals versus Concordia. So let's see if they can get their footing under them early. Mafia extra pass from the center arc. Splash! Opening up the account is Victoria. They hit about 34% from three-point range and get the first two from Ralph. And add 12% off that, off the turnover. Ralph, 46% from the land beyond in general. Open from the near side, 45. Back heel, rebound, new 14. That is courtesy of Arnett. And now he's in the paint. Arnett, finger roll around you. Rebound Elizabeth, who's a rebounding machine with the Magnus in his hands. And Ralph will be the other guy they have to contain. If you decide to try and go all out on stopping Diego Mafia, stop the two and three scores. Lacombe rims down the three. Rebounded by the Vicks, or the Vikes. 
I think my Vicks are not for my throat because I need that as we speak. And here is Diego Mafia. Only day one, partner. Two more days to go. No, I know. I did 13 last week. I've got 11 more here. Maybe. I hear you. Tough life. It is a tough <laughs> life indeed. Ralph with it from the 45. That's off the front iron. Rebound, new 14 again. So Uvic has really controlled the rebounding numbers. Yeah, at 39 per game, which is number 23 in the nation. Mafia from the center arc. And that lacked the purchase and the recovery and the finish not. There's been one-way traffic rebounds. And right now they're holding Laval in a cul-de-sac. It's almost like a hockey power play out here on the basketball court for Uvic. And now Mafia again. Cannot punish them. Joseph can't get to it. Schmidt can't get to it. And this will go back to Laval, who will be the side relief after that unofficial power play from Uve. And that's going to be every single time Diego Mafia has the ball in his hands as well as a quick substitution made right off the bat there by Nathan Grant, who's been the head coach since June 2019. But you talk about the offensive rebounds, partner. I mean, they're first in Can West in the regular season, averaging just a hair under 50 rebounds a game. 16 offensive as well. That's first in that category. Duf. And that ball is repelled away by Ralph. And talk about the defending here. Ubik were number 10 in the nation at 73 points given up per game. Laval, number three in the nation at 70 points per game. I mean, it's going to be a tall task. You want to put those numbers to the test, no better one than this. Cole puts it to the test, and he gets the first two. It's a 3 lead for the Vikes. Yeah, the senior average is 10.4 points per game, 45% from the field. Good inside track to the lane there. Mafia trying to get himself tracked up, and that is denied by Elizabeth. And this goes back over to Ubik with 14 left in the shot clock. It's a size mismatch in that situation. Tried to ride him out, switch back to that right hand underneath the net, and he'll inbound with 14 now. Jujubic shooting about under 43% per game this season. Another whistle, a foul on Lacombe, and this will be non-shoot as Arnett was impeded by Lacombe. So you wonder how aggressive you want to be right off the bat, especially knowing the perimeter prowlness of the Vikes. Vikings look like Vikings. Massive size on this roster from top to bottom. Coming into the paint. Mafia. Short. Elizabeth recovered. And here comes Joseph the other way. Lacombe down the left side. Joseph. Jab step. Looking for options. He finds Elizabeth. High low. Diouf. Up and over. He was not in the goal. And Lacombe won't be able to the season. And they're up by one. And Mafia already hold three. That won't matter. And that's a miss. Rebound, a new 14 again, recovered by Ralph. And a whistle right there, and that goes back to the way. And an outside 14 is right of bounds. Just, just, just didn't check his footing at the end there, partner. But Elias Ralph, for as lethal a shooter as he is, I mean, 46% from the land beyond, the hair under 16 points per game for the junior. He is one of the best on this team when it comes to crashing the boards and creating length on the perimeter as a defender. And this cathedral noise here, Laval, could it be a factor against Uvic? Lacombe. Lacombe to the left, and that was pushed out by Uvic, and this will be Laval ball with nine left in shot clock, 6.40 left in the game clock, up by one. And for those of you just tuning in for the first time today, I mean, it's been a theme in the first two games where a lot of action inside the paint, unless it's blatantly obvious with the extension, they're gonna let him play big boy ball. This is a uh, big man ball out here today with Laval and Uvic going at it. So Joseph the inbound on the end line. And here's Lacombe. Doof, this is his spot. And he misses it that time. And that takes a ricochet back into Mafia's hands. And now here he comes the other way. Oh, and you hear the doof every time he shoots it, too. Diego Mafia silencing the crowd with a jumper. It's a 5 4 lead for the visitors from Uvic. It's just a matter of time. He's 48% from the field, first and makes, fifth in percentage. I mean, you can only hold that guy off the score sheet for so long. Five times at 30 plus points, and now it's going to line is Harris Elizabeth. 14 times, led team rebound. He had 26 rebounds in a win over UCAP. And he talked talk about Elizabeth and his career acumen. He played at Vanier College with. And Junior Geller, who we'll see next game for Dalhousie, they went undefeated, won the Quebec title back-to-back -back years. Went to McGill University, was at the Nationals in 2022 with the Redbirds, transferred over to Laval this past season, and here he is back in the season of crime with the Nationals. Quite a journey, to say the least. I mean, imagine that they had an all ideals here, partner. Well, you know, here we are. And Elizabeth, Elizabeth with another rebound. The turn, the twist, short, well defended, second bite of the cherry. Lacombe from the 45. Spot. That's a good one there. They're 31% for the Lambion. Fourth in the province 
here, but that no look and then to the wing side there is going to force a timeout. No, uh, is it a timeout? And it's going to be a, a foul. foul. It'll be a foul indeed. And coming into the game now, it was William Monza. Also the game for the first time is Sergio Pereira for you, Vic, as he brings a little bit more steel and size to the court. Pereira, during the regular season, uh, had nine points against McEwen, came off the bench in the Can West final, and twice he had two points, three rebounds. McCollum's got five of that matches the total so far for the Vikes here early at four minutes gone in the first queue. So Moazzo will have the chores of Davis and Mafia in this situation. Here he goes to the left, back to the right. Mafia inside the arc. Mafia again, and a long range three. Back heel, that will be right to the Elizabeth's hands, and here comes Mwanza in the Rougeur. Laval scoring 92 points a game. Elizabeth, rebound, Doof getting it back, a new 14 for Laval. And right now it could be rebounding, that could be the key with these two teams. Elizabeth, whistle, and Pereira will be called for the infraction. And you talk about Laval, a team that only had 38 rebounds per game. You pick up 48 rebounds per game. And it might come to those 50-50s here, uh, partner, that if Laval can pull off the ultimate victory over Uvec, they got to get those second and third chance opportunities. Well, and challenging guys like Pereira early and often is a good case. He's fifth in terms of offense rebounds, 23 blocks, is seventh in the Can West, so attack the rim. Joseph missing the three, rebound Mafia. And Mawansa right on him like peanut butter and jam, and that pass sent back to the Pacific Ocean from Mafia 10 for Ronaldo Robinson. And right now, you have to wonder if maybe the crowd noise is starting to be a big factor for you, Vic, in trying to contain this Rougier offense. It's just a matter of rhythm for this team. I mean, Robinson was the other guy I was going to talk about. If you got Mafia and Ralph Stymien or stifled for a little bit, he could explode in a blink of an eye. Joseph on the miscue. Joseph kick out. Look home from the flats. Finding Duf in the jungle. In for two. And now they're up 10-5. as ideal a start, but you have to maintain this for 40 minutes against a team like the Vikes. Mafia, nylon on that three. You talk about Uvic, they shoot 34% from three-point range, make 12 a game. Mwanza's three. Rebound, Duf. Elizabeth, and they'll slow down once more, and right now they're going punch for punch with the Vikings of Victoria. Joseph, and that is a miss. Pereira with the rebound. They have to have a perfect four quarters though to hold this guy off the sheet. And Mafia's had five so far. And he lost the handle momentarily from the 45. Missing that three, Lacombe with the recovery. And here comes Laval up by two, 4-10 left. They're three of 13 from the field now under 25%. Transition three is sparkling for Lacombe. The rough by five. He's having a hell of a first quarter to say at the least for the host here. Now second three-pointer, 60% from the field. Laval making about 12, making about six a game, in fact. Here from the near side, 45. Missed this time by Tesper Georges, and now back over to Laval it comes. Better box out there, though, by the Rouge or Mawanza, denied by Pereira. Using the repel factor, they hit about four and a half blocks per game, but he's the court. And now, stops your play. I you know, say it's out of bounds there on Pereira last as he got tied up on the baseline there. Both players slid. And we got a timeout called the first one of this game. Timeout call, 3.37 left, 13-8 lead for the host over the UVic Vikings. Stay tuned from St. Paul, Quebec, presented by CBC Sports. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. 
CBC is Canada's home for university sports action. The nation's top university women's basketball teams are in Edmonton this weekend for the 2024 U Sports Final Eight presented by the West Edmonton. And a lot going on. Don't forget they'll have the Constellation semifinal games exclusive uh, to CBC Sports YouTube channel. Tomorrow night, catch championship semifinal coverage. And beginning at 8 p.m. on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and CBC Sports YouTube. Head on by Women's Nationals at Edmonton, Alberta, at the University of Alberta campus. And right now we have a thriller early on. A bit of a twitch for the Vikings. The pirouette. Milan's missing that. Pereira might have been, had an influence in that play. Yeah, and the uh, two powerhouses in the women's game and the Laval Rouge or at the Huskies winning their quarterfinal matchup says you'll hear that a lot here this evening, which is silence or a ooh from the crowd off a shot from Mafia. Mafia hitting that three. They're down by two. And that timeout came at a pure moment here for the Vikes, the long range from Sebu Saul, and that is going to stop play with 308 left, and this is going to go against the Vikings, and now you look at the Ubik Vikes, they have three team fouls compared to the two for Laval with 308 left in this first quarter play. Well, they're getting a pair of substitutions here as Ralph is going to check out of the game. Ethan Bogues going to check into the game, 5.5 points per game, but Mafia has already had three of nine from the field and they're comfortable with this kid taking 35 to 40 shots a game they'll live with the numbers and you'll see that's a consistent theme in the half court they ran for you big Pereira's on two personal fouls Brendan Wembe in the game for his first time today Wembe now twerking, working his way down low Wembe a 61 percent field goal shooter and you see what and Shaden Smith, and he just gets him turned around for a second. And the game for the first time, Izzy Hellman. And back out it comes. And now Robinson, the super sub for the Vikes. Down low into the lower block. Hellman for three. Missing that. Joseph can't get to it. Saved by Uvic right into the hands of Uvic. It went through two hands of Laval, and they get a new 14 with number 14 in the possession. Ronaldo Robinson, and he lost it. Wemby knocked over, and it goes back to Laval. 2.3 laps. So right now, it's the momentum is in the side of the red and gold. I mean, the red and gold are having a brilliant first quarter at this point as a team, and you can't ask for anything better for a team that protects the ball stupendously during the regular season. Only 12 turnovers a game. That's good for first in the Can West in the regular season. They've already committed five here within the first almost eight minutes of this game. So Fabrice Watier in the game for the first time for Laval. No subs lined up for Uvic, and here is Lacombe with it. Lacombe, another wealthy player of experience. Sadu Saul. The jumper is good. Sadu Saul led the team in steals twice. That three against UCAM. Started 11 games and made 73 this season. They're shooting over 35% at this point as well, while holding the visitors to 24 in our turnover. Mafia glitched up, went in the recovery. Slow to get up his Mafia, and here comes Watier the other way. Lacombe, around one, around two. Wembe in for the juice. in this game here early and that's what you want to do if you're the underdog mafia kick out to robson the flats twisting and turning against wetier now the noise picking up here tough shot rebound right to wembe and a miss from uvic and here come the rougiard the other way wembe will slow back out to wetier to get an overload to the left of the formation wetier in the switch against mafia Sadu Saul looking for the options. He finds Lacombe again. Lacombe twisting, turning, double team, jumper. No good. Rebounded by the Vikings, and here comes Mafia of the way. That's one of the few hometown bounces they can't get here in this first quarter. Ethan Bogue in the game for the first time for the Vikes as well. Mafia, whistle, and this will be a foul, which will be the 13th foul on the Rougiour. And this will be non shoot for the visitors. From Victoria. Yeah, one may just overrode the screen in that situation. Good job by Mafia with the head ball, but we see the ball movement on the other side by the Val Rouge or they over attack in terms of the paint, the transition defense, slide from one to another, and then they're just getting them thinking about everything at this point. So clean looks at the rim has been the story so far. Robson the inbounder on the inline. Both. Smith. Back around the protractor for three. 
That's short. Rebounded by Joseph. And again, this is a big team that makes about 12 threes a game. Four games hit 17 plus threes. And the telepathy between Joseph and uh, Elizabeth was off. And now 3 of 13 from that mark as well. You live and you die by it. But there's a reason they're, they're in terms of the three-point shot, 12 makes, 35 attempts, both first in the Cam West. 41.4 left in this first quarter of play. It's been wonderful so far as uh, Robson has to do a little bit of a uniform change of his pants being uh, uniform being over the shorts. Yeah, you always got to tuck it in. It's one of those things that officials just look at, and guys will always try to get away with it, maybe a quarter inch at a time hanging out. Greg Campbell, Mokon here on this Friday night's early session of the evening window games. Doof, almost had a jump ball right there. Eight left in the shot clock. Underneath, short, rebound Doof, missed by Smith. And Laval has a chance with the shot clock off to end off this first quarter on a positive. And Steve Joseph is fouled by Tespa Georges. And right now, for Coach Greg Bocamp, the timeout cannot come any soon to kind of get this recalibrated as you see from this highlight right there. I mean, if you want me to be blunt, it's something he talked about in the pregame and something you saw in the Can West. They are just not a fast starting team. It's just the live model they live, they play by, and they're, they're used to playing catch up, so they'll have a bit of a hole to start the second. Backdoor Doof! Short. Rebound Doof! Second by the Cherry Sweet, and they're up 21 11. And now the last action for Robs at the half court. And they missed that at the end of one. The hosts, the 21, the visitors, 11. Stay tuned, you're watching the 2024 U Sports Final 8 on CBC Sports. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. CBC is Canada's home for university sports. This weekend, CBC Sports presents every breathtaking moment of the U Sports track and field from the University of Manitoba. Coverage of Championship Saturday begins tomorrow, 1 p.m. East, exclusively on CBC Gem and cbcsports.ca. The track and field events going on right now out in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and right here in St. Paul, Quebec. It's a dreamy start here for the Laval Rougiore. They'd be using the adrenaline fuels of, of the crowd as a real ability to browse through Uvic. Could they maintain this clip, or do you think Uvic wakes up from the slumber early on? Well, you want to make a track analogy to what you just read there, partner. It's like the steeplechase. Hey, everyone's hot out of the gate. They're flying over that watermark early and often. They're excited. Their legs are fresh and under them. And then the miles start adding up. And you have another lap, and another quarter, and another possession. And then you start seeing the separation in terms of the training and the eliteness come out. The question is whether at this point, uh, if the Rouge Or can hold it together till the end of the half, you have to like their chances. But quarter one, check mark. And right, a check mark goes in favor of the battle. Now we're going through the battle. Coleman's been absolutely a miss against Ubeck and both ends of the boards. And this will be back to Laval with 9.52 left in this first half. And then our turnover here, again, a story of the first half. And there were seven committed in that first quarter alone for a team that on the season is not known for turning it over much, 12 to be exact. So they're climbing towards that mark in the early stages of the second queue. Joseph blistering, can't finish. Duke can't get to it and recovered by Ubik. And here come the Vikings the other way, led by Tespa George's drop pass around one. Ralph. Around Doof. Ralph can't finish. Rebound Doof. 
See the contrast of styles here, though. Despite the Vikes liking the three-point shot, the Rouge are more than content. Nice slip. Back door. Better finish coming in for the Olympic Young, who gets his first three points of the day. He on the bench, shot 44% this season. Five out. Thought that dribble handoff was going to happen, and then, whoops, lost him back door. Perfect route there. Mafia. Oh, he got to shoot his touch over Duke. You see how he is the coolest man on the ground with his ability to shoot that ball. He's now for 10, 10 points in this game to lead all scores. Lacombe at eight, deal with that six on the other side. Lacombe. And that goes right back to the hands of Mafia. And you talked about it before, partner, about them trying to get their shots in. We'll see if this makes well for them in the second quarter. Robson for three. Test for Georges right back in for the triple. Shooting 34%. Timeout call by Nathan Grant. He sets momentum going to the all-whites. And right now, it is a timeout 8.37 left. Stay tuned here from Laval. It is Laval 23, Victoria 16 from the 2024 Men's Nationals presented by CBC. game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 University Cup Men's Hockey Championship returns to Toronto for, for the first time in a quarter of a century, March 14th to 17th at the Matinee Home Ice, located within the walls of the historic Maple Leaf Garden. Single game tickets start at $23. Kid, click on the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit Ticketmaster.ca to order your tickets. The 2024 University Cup hosted by the Toronto Metropolitan University Chase the glory, and right now, Uvic trying to chase Laval down by seven with 8.35 left in this first half of play. A key for Uvic to get back in this game here. I mean, just stay the course if you're the Vikes. It's a script you've seen plenty of times, multiple times in the Can West playoffs as well, so nothing unfamiliar for them. Off the window and in, and they're back up by nine. 8.20 left, Steve Joseph, the shot maker. And if you're the Rouge or keep going back to work inside the perimeter there. It's where they're making their living in the paint, a contrast to the last game we saw where points to the paint were a premium. Robinson is fouled by Lacombe, and he will go to the line for two. Ronaldo Robinson led the team with 33 points in the Can West Final. You talk about his value. He had 40 points against Manitoba. And there was a great piece on the U Sports website about his growth. And I'll give you a little nugget here, a little geography nugget. Ronaldo Robinson and I live 45 seconds away from each other in Montreal. Small world. There you go. Small world. So I've seen him play at Dawson College. And I uh, know his family very well, and uh, a proud moment for him to be out here with all the Robs. You ever beat him in a game of one-on-one? -on -one? That is uh, for me to know, you to find out. And right now, we're finding out with all the Robs again, the uh, oh. bikes back up. And, uh, Foul far away from the basket by the affirmation of Ronaldo Robinson. That's a cheapy one, so they'll be at one apiece now. But key here is like holding the leading score at eight, has two fouls. So decision time early made by Nathan Grant. He's going to let him rest for a few. Right now, Ubik trying to contain the Laval fizz in the bottle. And this accelerator of an offense has really picked up their pace here in this second quarter play inside eight, up by seven. Joseph, a veteran point guard. Here is Ismail Duf. Joseph going through, kick out, near side three. And that's a miss for Leslie Yell. And Duf is going to go off the ankle of Ralph, who's not happy about that as he's trying to work the referee on that play. And Duf just will beat him to the baseline in that situation. It's just hustle and heart. And that's what you have to have, as corny as it sounds when you're an underdog. It's a game of basketball at the end of the day. Those little plays add up. 
And here is Elizabeth, the jumper does not add up. Rebounded by the Vikes, and here come Uvic the other way, led by Mafia. Robson, the dancer. Robson trying to work the interplay with Schmidt. He's still in possession against Elizabeth. Robson through the teeth, and you see why he's blitzing ferocity on the court. And that's why they defer to him when Mafia can't get it going. Joseph is fouled. And again, another late one there by Tesco Georges this time in transition. They're just catching them off guard and just little plays like that at the end of the day. You see Tesco Georges try to ride over, fall through on the left wrist there, and it's an easy call for the officials. And you talk about this UVic team, three-time Canada West champion. And this is a team that had a bit of a glitch in terms of where they were last year. This is a team they thought they could have gone far and what they did last year, of course, they finished in fourth place in 2023. And they finished sixth in 2022. They were fourth in 2015. They've won eight titles. Their last one was in 1997. I mean, it's an old adage of offense versus defense. What's going to win you championships? You want scoring? This is a team. 92 points per game, 33 makes a game. First for, in terms of three pointers made, so they've got that going for them. Robinson ping ponging through, and that goes out of bounds. His jog through is not correct on the position of body, and 706 left here in this first half. Now, if he somehow got that ball off, it would have been miraculous there. The Vikes, though, settling into this game slowly, a 9 4 lead here in the second quarter, outscoring the home side. Steve Joseph back with it as we are south of seven in this first half of play. It's been the flavor of the game, Laval has had the lead. They're up by five, but can they maintain this lead going towards the team talk? Joseph against Mafia. Off the window. And in. The geometry was perfect on that shot. Tom off call by Uvic. They're down by seven. 6.49 left in this first half. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Nationals presented by Michelob Light on CBC Sports. Ready when you are, guys. Welcome back here to Laval University. 27-20 lead for Laval over UVic. Uh, it's been, a, I want to say, a big flap for UVic, but they have not found their bearings yet. Down by seven, 6.49 left here, and now they're full of hunger. Can they get back? And ready, down by seven. Well, and dribble penetration has been key. They've got 14 of their 27 in the paint as Mafia splits two off glass. Mafia looking like Shinobi out there as he split through, and now they're down by five. And we'll see who from the supporting cast of Vikes can come back with points beyond Diego Mafia in this game. Well, Robinson's got four, so they defer to him at one point. But Ralph is another guy. He's only got three. They won't get him going. Joseph, well defended by Robinson. He's going to be called for a second personal foul. What does Volkamp do now? Does he take him out or keep him in with two I personal? I say ride him at this point, and you're in a territory that you're used to. And, well, that's why I'm up here, and he's down there at this point as substitution comes in. So playing the long game here as he brings back into the game in Izzy Hellman. A Victoria native, and now the Vikes are down by five. Six twenty left. Joseph. No one's the out. Tripped up. Well defended by the Vikes, and Joseph there for support. Four left in the shot clock. Joseph triple team. Tough shot for Saul. A rebound right back over it comes to Arnett. Good switch offs defensively, not reaching when someone's on the ground and. There's an interesting strategy there. So now he's entering the half court. They want to get that high double going in that situation. Wasn't expecting it. Yeah, you anticipate that he's going to throw that ball out quicker now that he's seen that look once. And this will go back over to Uvic with 5.58 left. We have one more game after this. It will be Brock against Dalhousie. 
Uh, many think that's probably the most 50-50 game we have amongst the, the four today in terms of the percentage points of how it could be on day one. And Dalhousie's always a tough out. I mean, everyone knocks the, you know, the East Coast for their sports, but when it comes to basketball especially, these guys are no slouches. They're always a tough first game. I don't disrespect the AUS because you had 25,000 plus for the event for the AUS finals that they had at the Halifax Arena. And double dribble there called, so turnover one, one you haven't seen a lot of here in this first half, only the fourth committed here by the home side. So watch they call for that. It goes back to Uvic. He'll be on the side out, and this will be Griffin Arnett, who will have a chance to inbound this game in with 543 left. On him will be number 12 with Mawanza. They got to keep protecting the ball. 18 and a half turnovers game. That's the fifth worst there. It's off the foot last. Negative three differential. Mafia. Bullseye from three. They're down yeah. by two with 5-3 left in this first half. And guess what? He's already up to 15, partner. I mean, the, the kid will score. It doesn't matter how many shots he takes. 6 of 13, 3 of 8 from the land beyond now. Scored 60% of the team's total points. Saul, jab step. Around the protractor it comes. Mawanza's got 6 left in the shot clock. Tough shot, better finish. And they're back up fourth, by the way, left. Now it's a big possession for Laval. They've had a lot of those mid-range jumpers here, and they're just finding their spots. And the most important thing is they're still clipping at a good rate, 40% for the field. They are pestering Uvic so far in this first half. Been up as much as nine. Doof went off the fingertips of Doof, and this goes back out of play. And this will be Uvic ball, nine left in the shot clock, and Uvic is chasing and hunting, but right now the GPS data is not showing them the right direction to get back to his lead. Well, he created a traffic jam in the middle of the lane there as he was intending it for Schmidt, but by just putting those hands up, crashing into the paint, it goes off and last. So Robinson on two personal fouls. He's on the bench as we speak. Right now, it is three team fouls for Uvic, one for Laval with 4.53 left in his first half. Back door! The arts and crafts met at the height on the alley finish, courtesy of Ralph. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to feel after that one there. Now he's seen that second basket go through, and that's emphatic as well. And now the pressure's on Laval, and you see why the pressure's on Laval, and you see why Uvic is one of the best teams, 301, and that does not go through, and that is an incomplete move, as unfortunately for Hellman, he had the moment of glory to tie it up and ends up coming up empty. And despite the miss, I, the one thing you need to pay attention to with this team in particular is they're always going to make the right extra pass at the end of the day. I have not seen a team this efficient in a long time where they're, they're just always willing to give up the shot for something better. Could Laval brush off the pressure as the host school? They're up by two, nursing this lead. Lezignal with it. Pure wedding. Elizabeth in traffic, back out, five left in the shot clock from the free throw line. And that's missed by Mawanza, new 14, slashing the Rizial, the super sub, makes it a fourth point lead for Laval. Well, Helm and Ralph both crash out there, and then they just get caught in one step inside later, and it's two for the home side. You see them playing five out here, turnover. Stolen, Mawanza, flight 12, take it off, two handed autographs. Back into this game as well. And our timeout called here by looks like Craig Bocamp. 348 left in this first half. 33-27 lead. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Nationals. And here's replay right here. I mean, you look at Diego Mafia. It's not gonna take a lot. He needs two feet of separation at the most, and you see it look quite often when he goes in the pick and roll. The thing is. For him, a lot of his shots come on those volleyball court dimensions in terms of the three-point shot, not a lot off the wing, but see the other side, the Rouge or sticking to the game plan, which is get inside and get inside often. They've got 16 points in the paint now. And again, they're, they're relatively uncontested looks at this point. They're just cleaning their sets. Then you see the transition bucket here and a little extra jam here on your Friday night. This game has had plenty of vigor. It's been on a nice edge right now in this first half. Laval's up by six. And for those who are watching on the West Coast, we welcome you those into the um, cauldron that they call Laval University. The Rougiore have had a wonderful start. They've led for the majority of this first half. 
And right now for the Vikings, they need an outlet of points, and they have not found it beyond Diego Mafia, who at one point had 60% of the team's totals in this first half. Well, I mean, and the thing is, he takes over 60% of the shots in most cases, but they're still outscoring them by four here in the second quarter, 16 to 12. But they just got to continue to roll with the punches. This team is not known for starting fast. They're starting to find their footing here a little bit. But as they feel you out more and more, as Mafia continues to get more comfortable, it becomes a whole different matter. But with him on the bench now, it's going to become a two-man game between Robinson and Ralph. That's the voice of Greg Campbell on Mocon. Robinson back in the game. It is late in the first half, 343 left. Uvic down by six. Swung around to Robson, trying to get around Mwanza. Elizabeth on the support, switch of play, back out, near side of Cubs. Pereira against Elizabeth, the two dreadnoughts, the hook shot. And that will be two shots come up for Pereira, who will go to the line. And this year, shooting 68% from the free throw line for the Vikes. Well, the Vikes as a whole are not much better at 69%. That's 11th in the can west so free throw line is something that hasn't been too kind to them make about 13 free throws per game they won 25 31 against calgary and uh against the sketch one went three of five so creating shots all as well as a big get for them and their lowest number was 57 percent against manitoba and they're down by four in this first half. And they've won their last nine, 17 and three on the regular season seven and two on the road so they're comfortable playing away from Vic. Doof. Back out to Joseph. Steve Joseph. Elizabeth for three. Splash! Harris Elizabeth shooting 38% from three. I mean, that kick out of that left leg just created such distinction and a moment of fret for them defensively. They had to respect the driving ability. Quick ass from Doof. And you start to see those uh, exit options for Uvic closing up quickly by Laval. But again, you're right, partner. They had to play four quarters it's not a one half game it's a four quarter game and they just they continue to wear down possession by possession and they they are staying the course that's the biggest thing is whatever the script is it's working open space caught in two minds and this will be going against laval and that basket will not count from hellman that'll be a second second foul on number 13 there and the junior is going to have to be substituted out so Elizabeth off, Wembe coming back in for the Val Rougiol. And he's and big for them. He's a first-team All-Star, averages 12 points per game. That's ninth, and he's first in rebounds at 11.8 rebounds a game, first offensively and total. So that's a big part on the inside missing now. Robinson with it again against Wembe. Dancing. Wow. That'd be on ice from the far side flats. Missing the three, and Pereira cannot get it from Joseph. And Joseph around Robinson, three on two. Joseph on the spin. And he will go back out to Wemby as he will get their sets all organized. Joseph on the byline. Here is Mwanza. In, kick out. Joseph, look, inside the arc. Missing that, Doof new 14. And Joseph again at the controls from the center arc. Can't hit it that time. Robson rebound, 210 left. You have to be concerned with the number of second chance opportunities for the hosts here if you're the number one seed. Robson turning, stopping, kicking. And Uvic on the ropes slightly. Knees are wobbly, but not being knocked out yet. And this will be a whistle. This will be a foul. And this will go against number 22, Baba Yao, who has led the team in steals twice in the game, had three against Concordia. And it's just a little hand checking there. And as he's trying to sweep, he's going to catch him. But Ronaldo Robinson loves to dance. The thing is, you just have to keep him in front of you, watch where those hips are going. And then that will dictate the ball movement in this situation. A side out for the Vikes. And back with his Robson against Mwanza. Wembe, we call for the foul, far away at the edge of the logo. And that will put, I believe, Uvic at the line. Bonus play the rest of the way. And that's the dangerous looking one there, because you ride him out towards that logo in that situation. You hedge your bets over the screen, but a silly little reach and extension at the end is not going to go unnoticed. And they head back to the line with the clock stopped. Right now, Robson's full of quality, full of purchase at the line. And the first free throw was good this season. Shot 66%, scoring under 15 a game. And this is a star who is going to take over the mantle for Uvic in the coming years. 
I'll just remember though, in terms of Mafia, he still has a year of eligibility left as he goes flushed on the second inning. He's the back-to-back -back Ken West Player of the Year too. And you wonder for Diego Mafia, CEBL might be in the radar coming up soon. And here is Wembe, and here is Laval, and they're trying to get back. Luzier scoring four key points, knocking over Robinson, and this will be a charge and a pantomime reaction from the Laval faithful. I mean, it's a it's a good reaction because they're frustrated with how much he emphasizes the fall at the end of the day there but if you look at the replay here it's quite clear as day as he goes into the lane he's just separating right into that chest region with the left elbow and again they're not going to let that slide it's been a consistent call since game one of this tournament you can chicken wing it as an offensive player but as soon as you want to extend that forearm at the end of the day doesn't matter how close quarters it is they're watching that mafia watch closely for three Back heel up in the air and recovered by Moanza and back out to Joseph with 80 seconds left in this first half. Now four, ten, three of ten from the land beyond. Look at Yao with it. And he lost momentum and he will go back to Joseph with ten left in the shot clock. It gets Robinson dancing through Joseph and that is going to be the third personal foul on Ronaldo Robinson. So they got burnt by bringing him back in and now for a bow cap, he might have to take him out to avoid a fourth personal before we get to the team break. Yeah, and that's just the right call at this point with 66 seconds left to go here in the first half. But credit to Stevie Joseph. I mean, you've seen a couple times with his dribble. It's very low to the floor, so you have to reach low if you're going to try and anticipate a steal in this situation as Helvin's going to check back into the game. But they, they like setting up on that left wing right now and then trying to go a little iso ball. We'll see uh, who's going to inbound it here for the Rouge or. So non-shoot, 106 left, new 14 for Laval on the end line. Duf. Here is Wembe. Here is Joseph. Four to his right, looking for a Duf in the post. He's going to be locked up against Ralph. Double team, finding Mawans on the edge of the paint. He's got to shoot. He does. And he misses. Rebound Duf, another 14 again for Laval. Mawanza in, denied by Pereira. Good job by Pereira there after Ralph got displaced in the box on the on the push out. Transition. Corkscrewing his way through. Can't finish. Rebound. Ping ponging right back over. And here is the Rizial as they slow down. 30 seconds left in this first half. Open for the 45. And another miss three by Laval. Again, a team that shot 30% from distance, which was number 33 in the nation. They've had three games when they went for 40%. They went 50% against UCAM here, but right now the three-point shot not going in. No, it's uh, not the look they want. I mean, you're going to take that one because it's open and no one's going to touch you on the wing there as they do not account for him on that side. But outside of that, they're 3 of 14, 21%. The worst part is, again, despite the miss there by Ralph, this is a chance with the, up, with the clock stopped to get some points. So provided that Laval gets the ball back without interference from Uvic, they can play for the last shot and have a lead going towards the team break. Rougeau will get that last possession as the shot clock will virtually be shut off with 0.9 of the difference. One for two, four-point lead for Laval. Last action perhaps for Steve Joseph, who's a technician at the point guard position. Watched by Hellman. Lorizier against Mafia. Here is Lorizier again with it as he wants Mafia away from Wembe. Eight left in the game clock. Denied. Back out it goes. And now Joseph at the death. And that shot lacked purchase. And with .6 left, Uvic can play for the last shot. That's enough time to get off the shot. That would be very tricky with the menu of options available to them. Well, you see the full court press here. So who do they account for? Do they go for a pick and a high roll in this situation? And this will be back to Laval. That's a fumble, to say the least. He thought Ralph thought May, Diego Mafia was going to go for the home run shot there. Now that's a, a lazy turnover. And because of that, they get a timeout on the floor and they get to draw up one for the end of the first so half. So timeout called by Laval. They're going to play for the last shot out of .6 left. And it, it's it's sort of a boxing fight right here where Ubik's got body blow, body blow, be consistent with it, even though they're down by four. But Laval has not found that first round knockout to the jaw of the Can West champs. It's hard though. You're asking a lot for this team. I mean, they, the ring rust we talked about with the GGs is similar for this Rouge Or team where 
Looks like they're fine after a couple of weeks off, but there's a reason why this Vikes team is number one in the country. I mean, they're fourth in points allowed per game. They hold opponents to 40% from the field. That's third in the Cam West during the regular season. They're a stout team. They're experienced. They've been rolling with these punches all year where they're slow starters. So for them, as bad as the first half as this has been, they've outscored Laval by six, pending what happens on this set here. And it's manageable heading into the second half. That's the voice of Greg Campbell. I'm Mo Khan here on this Friday early evening. It is um, late afternoon in Victoria. We know the weather's beautiful right now around the Victoria area, but it has not been a beautiful first half for the Vikes against the Rougeau. Not a clean connection as they wanted in this first half for a team that scores about 92 points a game. Laval at 71 a game. And it'd be Joseph on the end line. And that's taken away by Ralph. And at the end of the first half, it is Laval 36, Vic, UVic 32. We're through 20 with 20 to go here from Laval. Could Laval pull off the biggest upset of the tournament on day one? We'll find out here. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National presented by Michelob Lights on CBC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Welcome back here to Laval University at halftime. Laval up by a score 36-32. Uh, UVic not having the cutting edge that they've uh, enjoyed throughout the Can West, as you see from the highlights in this first half. I mean, it's a team that shoots 43% from the field. They've been held to 30% here in the first half, but it's the points in the paint by the Rouge Or. They established that look early as you see them go to the inside, the high low action there, and a nice little finish acrobatic there. But 16 points in the paint compared to eight for the number one overall seed. Is the question for the Vikes is, you know, Mafia's had a good first half despite the shooting woes at 15 points, but Ralph and Robinson only have six apiece. So one of those two needs to get going. And on the other side, just can they defensively contain the dribble penetration as Lacombe should be checking in to this game in the third quarter, had foul trouble with two, but he had eight. He was kind of the fulcrum in the engine that started things for the home side. Uh, we saw towards the end of the first half some frailties from Laval. Uh, they're starting to show a little bit of the inexperience. 
as I said before, right, Ubik's been more consistent with the body blows, and Laval looking for the knockout shot. What's the key now for Laval? What's the team talk for Nathan Grant right now with his team knowing that, hey, they're up by four, but again, Ubik is, is there. I mean, the thing is, whatever their game plan was at the beginning, which was stay in the paint, contain Mafia as best as you can, they, they have to, it sounds repetitious, but they can't change what's been working for them at this point. There's only so many things you can do against a lethal scoring team like the Victoria Bikes. They've decided to live with the blows. At this point, Mafia is beating them for 15, but they've stopped the other two for a combined three of seven from the field. And then offensively, they just need to keep going back to work on the inside. All right, that's it for the first half highlights. And as for a big announcement here, every year U Sports presents a series of major honors to top student athletes in each sport. Here are the nominees and the winner of the 2024 U Sports Basketball Community Service Award. The nominees for the Ken Shields Award for Excellence in Basketball, Academics, and Community Involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Ken Shields pour l'excellence dans le basketball, les études et l'engagement communautaire sont Des Sports Universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Mitchell Mercereau, Cape Breton University, Université du Cap Breton, du Réseau du Sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Harris Elizabeth, Université Laval University, du Sport Universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Tazan Graham, Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne from Canada West, Alexander Dewar, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. Le laureat du prix Ken Shields pour l'engagement communautaire est... The winner of the Ken Shields Award for Community Service is... Alexander Dewar, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the semaine de la collection Nike Team. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. 
le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. Welcome back here to Laval University, site of the 2024 Men's U Sports National Championship presented by Michelob White and Green Shield as well. Uh, great camera Mo Khan on this game here. It's been a moment of magic for Laval to be up by four, but right now, could he continue to have that uh, hex on Juve going towards the second half? Because you talk about first half, second half, and this eight-time champion Vikes are not going to go down without putting up a fight. Well, they're used to starting slow at this point, but for a team that was 17 and three on the regular season, seven and two on the road. And I mean, you look at the stats here; they're only shooting 30 percent from the field, 26 percent from the land beyond, so well below their seasonal average. But this team just came out about three or four minutes later than that of the Rouge or They looked very relaxed from what I could see coming out of the first half here so despite the shooting woes I mean it's something they're used to they know game, basketball is a game of runs and we've got two more quarters to put this together and to you know have as abysmal as a first half in their eyes that they would potentially feel to be down by four I don't think they're sweating at this point a uh, great crowd on hand opening game UCAM Ottawa Ottawa winning that one and then it was an OEA sweep as Queens took out Winnipeg I literally at the death they won by one over the Westman and now we have a Can West RSEQ battle. And tonight we'll wrap it up with Dal against Rock. But right now, this game's still in the balance for Laval and Uvic going towards the second half of action. And you have to wonder for Ronaldo Robson, who's on three personal fouls. How does Nathan Grant look at that avenue? Because they know that if they get him an early fourth, it might be vacation time for him on the bench for a little bit longer than I, normal. I think the telling sign is how quickly can Diego Mafia and Elias Ralph score. And if they see that they're cold and they have to rely on Ronaldo Robinson, then their their hand may be forced at this point in keeping him on the court. And then you look at the coaching adjustment on the air side, you just go back and attack this guy. You know he's in foul trouble already at this point. So I wouldn't be surprised if they roll Robinson out to start. But really, it's dependent on how quickly can Mafia and Ralph get hot because Mafia has done his job 6 of 14 for 15 points. But usually, that pick and roll situation, him and Ralph start getting going, and Ralph loves lighting it up on the wing three. 
You haven't seen that here so far. He's just two of five from the field for six points. Well, we get ready for second half action here. All a pretty, not a sellout, but a very strong crowd on hand here. You, you have to think that if Laval were to advance over you, Vic, tomorrow night might be a, a, a sellout that might have fans watching it from the windows to our right. I was going to say, you're going to have to start jostling for position to get into this building. I mean, even before the start of this game, I thought about taking a break and walking around the facilities for about five minutes to stretch my legs. The crowd that was awaiting me, I was like, ah, I think I'll wait till the end of the night to head out that way. I thought it was the Gregory Campbell uh, fan base over there, you know? Waiting for you. Oh, they don't know about me yet. Uh, I thought they were, because that's why I thought what, it was what, good, what good words did you put in for me, partner? I don't put any words for anybody. I walk around mysteriously around this campus of St. Paul University over here. So we look forward now towards second half as we're seconds away. And now the question is, in this chess match, who will come up with the two-move play to get themselves back in? Could the Ubik do it, or could Laval maintain their lead of four? if not even more, going towards quarter number three and quarter number four. Bigger quarter for who in this line right now? You pick the out. I say the Rouge et Or, honestly, because it's a position the Vikes have been accustomed to at this point. The Rouge et Or riding the high of that first half, and then you see Lacombe is going to check back into the game now. He's got two fouls. He's got eight points in that time, but a bit of a different complexion in terms of dribble penetration when he wasn't in there in the late stages of the second quarter. So as well as the first half as you could have asked for, do they have the storybook ending? Only 20 minutes will tell us. Acoustics in this arena has been tremendous and could Laval find the rhythm and Duke does. And they're back up by six. Went to fake the screen there and then slipped inside and Ralph got caught looking. Like a bystander in that play. And here is Ralph for three. Bullseye on that, and just like that, down by one score. That's cheeky because he's six and makes with 45, and he's fifth in percentage at 46 percent. Elizabeth, a bulldozer in the paint, back up five. And he's one of the other guys. He had two quick fouls on his end, and he's the player of the year. He's now two of five from the field for the home side. Ralph tried to penetrate, and that shot lacked anything. I think he was trying to look for Schmidt, the sophomore, on the inside there. And then when he realized he had to pull it at the end of the day, he is way too low with that ball. Ubik still nibbling away, down by five. Joseph at the point guard position, and now back out to Lacombe. Duf having an efficient first half for Laval. Here is Elizabeth. Joseph, space. Lacombe on the swing. Nylon up by eight. In first half, eight points. Starts off the second one with his third three-pointer of the game to go along with four assists. And you talk about this team. Nathan Grant said it's just basketball at the end of the game. When the day when this game starts, they're playing like that. To the near flats. And that's a miss by Arnett. And now Laval back on the front foot with 8.33 left in this third quarter. Lacombe on 11 points. Elizabeth with the pick. Lacombe looking inside, repelled away by Ralph, and here comes the Vikes the other way. He's elite defensively, too. He gets told about his offense giftness, but this kid can do it all. Ralph with it, watched by Duke, the two dreadnoughts. Schmid inside, and he is fouled by Lacombe, but again, a two-man game. Even though Diego Mafia had a great first half, it feels like Elias Ralph might be the the conductor, the central figure to this box office comeback, perhaps, for you, Vic. Well, you see the facilitator roll there at the top of the key there, and a nice little whip around pass there to Smith, and then he had pocket corner looks if he wanted to get that ball off quickly. He gets tied up there, so he'll head to the line for two. Yeah, Smith, again, 40 points against Grant McEwen during the regular season, had 10 against Brandon at the line this year, shooting 69%. By, Duncan BC. By the way, the, the in-game announcer here, the number of costume changes, kudos to this guy because he was wearing red earlier, back to gold. He's got to be changing every like five minutes here. It's, He's really got this crowd in this game. It's like a Madonna concert out here. <laughs> and now it's a six-point lead for Laval. 8.04 left in this third quarter play. Elizabeth back with it. They go five high here, so they're trying to get some pick and roll. Mawanza, tough shot. And that lacked anything. Recovered by Tespa Georges, and now here he comes, down by six. And Mawanza comes back on the recovery to prevent a clean passage of play, and it remains Uvic ball. So the benefit is you have more room to operate if you have five out on the wing and try and attack your way into the paint. The problem is if no one crashes, you don't have a second chance opportunity. Mafia, watch for Mawanza. 
Mafia, the jumper. Back heel, rebound Doof. That's one you don't see from him often. Contested and right by that free throw line. Yeah, he's nervous out there. And Steve Joseph showing the acumen of a cool come cucumber in this, mid in this process. That's a high arcing shot there, and they've got a 9-5 lead here in this third quarter. Looks like they continue to work the game plan as they go back to Ralph on the inside. Up by eight. Here is Ralph using his deltoids. That is short. That is off of Elizabeth. Remains Uvic ball as Schmidt applied pressure on Elizabeth. And in the first quarter, it, it felt like it was a hockey power play for Uvic on the rebound in here. Could that be a big factor in the second half? I mean, they're, they're the best in the Cam West when it comes to offensively in total, and then defensively, they box out too. So for sure, especially with the shooting rolls, any second looks they can get. Mafia. He's 0-4, and now Joseph on the run. Here is Lacombe on the gallop. Joseph, and it's going to be a charge. Lacombe will be called for the infraction, the culprit on that play. And if that was converted cleanly, that might have popped the roof off of this arena. Yeah, that's a big play by the senior, though, and Tess for Georges there. We're not known for scoring five points per game, but elite defensively in terms of his ability to transition and switch appropriately. The substitution coming for Grant and company. Yeah, and now for Lacombe, that's his fourth personal foul, so he will have a, a vacation that he doesn't want at this point of the game. Well, we talked about in the last game, Donald Stewart being subbed out with about four and a half to go and how tough that was for this team. And you see the energy change when Lacombe's on the court, they're back up to an eight-point lead. And now three minutes gone here in this third quarter. He's going to have to sit on his hind and butt there until probably three or four minutes left in the fourth, depending on what kind of game we get here. Yeah, this will be a long respite for him. And right now we're south of seven, eight-point lead for the Rougeau against the Vikes. Here's Mafia and a felon doof. And now we talk about the law of averages. And for Laval, that's the fourth team foul, none on Uvec, and you would have to imagine that might even out here with 6.48 left. Now you see the head bob there, he gets him twice and he gets a second call there, but interestingly enough, Mafia is yet to head to the line this evening. And here he is on possession, watched by Lozzi down. And that ball is sent back towards Whistler, and this will go back over to the Laval Rougiour. There's a half step the wrong way intended for Arnett there, who's 0 of 6 from the field. And they're, they're clean with possessions. 11 turnovers per game, Uvic had. He had 20 against Trinity Western, which is the most of their season. And they got 13 in this game. That's accounted for 15 points. Mwanza from the center arc. Right down Ray Lebeck Street, and they're up. 48, 37, 11 plus points right now. Just timely, timely baskets at this point. And now they're outscoring them 12 to 5 here in this third quarter. Mafia from the 45. And he misses. Volleyballed up in the air, snatched away by Mwanza. He's all by himself. Two further ahead. Draw pass, Joseph. Inside the line, got it. Now they're up by 13. Well, Joseph just continues to work inside an uncontested free throw. And Building in louder for good reason. Stay tuned. Laval has you pick on the ropes up by 13. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Nationals presented by Michael Wright on CBC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3:30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Oh, no. No. Oh, my. You're back. Oh, yes. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, March 14th to the 17th. Tournament packages and seal game tickets are on sale now. Click on the QR code at the bottom of your screen 
And visit Gales.com, UniversityTickets.com to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship in Kingston, Ontario. Every day, Queens winning their opening game. And it could be a big party if the Gales come up with the national title, bring it back down to Kingston, which is a great party town. Well, I mean, they already had that party with the OUA Wilson Cup there, and now they get to host the national championship. And then you see Laval right now continue to put in work. They're holding the bikes under 30% at 28 here in the third quarter. Mafia, the hottest property in U Sports, getting the two points right there. They're down by 11. And now the cutting edge trying to be picked up by U Uvic. And that's what he'll start to do is when he can't get it going, he'll attack the inside, make you respect it. For three, too strong. Back heel. Pereira the rebound off the mission of the Rizzi out. And it's 525 left in this third quarter play. Robinson back in the game, which is good news for the bikes. And here he is in Malanza. And last touch by Robson, his size 13. Got the edge of the ball, it goes back to a battle with 516 left. Well, look at that hustle and that read defensively in that situation by a freshman, nonetheless, to anticipate that pass in the half court there and then put his body on the line as he jumps the route there and then it goes off Robinson last. Yeah, you talk about Robson, he was polyax in that play, and you see from the replay over there how that was. And right now, for those who are doing brackets and have Uvic going through, it might be busted. Wembe stopped in the midair portion. Now Schmidt back with it. Here comes the bike trying to regain confidence on this possession. And that is not a confident pass, but recovered by Ralph, who goes up with confidence, and he's fouled by Duf. And now you look at it this way, Greg. Laval tried to run into a, a credit card issue of fouls going against the Laval Rouge York. Well, you look at the foul free throw discrepancy, too. I mean, they're 9 of 10 from that mark for the Vikes, then 1 of 4 for the Rouge Or. But we've seen this a number of times where in the half court, they just mishandle the ball for a couple seconds there. I don't know if it's the noise in this building or they're starting to feel that time is a little bit against them and the Vikes are starting to feel the, you know, cold feet. But Ralph nothing but net on that first one there and plenty of time left in this ball game 1455 oh, left nice. let's go to overtime so you can make a run free basketball or well, peter on the friday plans here but that's all right and now it is steve joseph back with it robs on him and without trying to get themselves a little bit more of a gloss of a lead of nine, if not more. And they go to that high 2-3 zone, the last two plays here defensively. Could he pick the lock of the 2-3 zone? Here's Joseph, rejected by Schmidt, out of bounds. And this remains Laval ball with what was two. Now one second left in the shot clock, but they might have to readjust that here. Well, and what you do is your dribble penetration or your ball movement has to be quick and crisp. And talking about quick and crisp, we're going to have to fire one off here. Not gonna be, it's not going to be 30 seconds on the shot clock, so it'll be three. three seconds left in the shot clock. So the menu of options on a three-second shot clock is not really vast. This might be, this might be uh, quick and tasty in terms of the options here. One dribble and a pull-up. Wembe, Joseph's got it. Way downtown, missing that completely in a violation right there by Laval. As Robson and Elizabeth going back at it, these two have had a uh, have locked horns in the Sage Up ranks. Dawson Vanny, in for those not familiar in the Quebec region, Dawson Vanny is almost like Leafs Canadians on a hockey night in Canada up there. So they've had a history with those two. I'm sure they love seeing each other again on the highest stage. Just an opportunity that they relish, to say the least. Well, right now, Laval's relishing the potential idea of being the bracket buster in this third game of four. Mafia. And that ball is sent towards Cranbrook 3C by Mafia. And you can just see right now, they've been lacking the clinical finish in the final part of the court and they have not, they've had no cutting edge so far in this period of play. Well, and again, another turnover off. Looks the defense. He has him on the left side and then just overshoots Ralph a little bit on that baseline there. They're content to send that zone. Lerazier back out. Elizabeth open momentarily well defended by Uvic and here comes Robson the other way. Oh, he's lucky too because Robinson was spun around for a second there off the ball movement. And he spun around and he will go to the line for free throws. Webby might be the culprit in that play. And Robinson has that nerveless type of approach to a game down by nine. He's a super sub. He's rescued the Vikes 
multiple times in situations like this he might have to have a superman keep on today well it's something that we talked about at the top of the broadcast was that it was going to come down to diego mafia and elias ralph were the two focal points but ronaldo robinson has always been their third ace in the hole there when push comes to shove but right now again tough sledding six points one of two from the field and that's his first miss free throw after hitting four straight to start. Robson Grease Lightning this offense and he gets them back down to eight and this is very much a chess match as we speak. The fact that La Rouge Aura are doing this without Lacombe who leads all home players with 11 points is impressive as well. He's on four personal fouls right now and now to the near side flats here's Saul who was banged up towards the end of the year and you see the rust from him as he missed that jumper and you have to wonder when Nathan Grant might put back uh, Lacombe at some point. Robson against Lacazier on the spin. And that is a miss. Mawanza back with it. Robson in entanglement with the Laval player. Mawanza short and now it feels like the basketball rim is starting to become like a keyhole for Laval. Yeah, it's starting to slow down this game too as they got the double high look. Laval wants time out on the next break. Mafia. There's a switch off they wanted. From the center arc. Missing the three and Laval breathing a sigh of relief as we're inside three. Three of 12, 25% now. Le Rizier. Nine. <laughs> shot or dying by and then each time the other way the Rouge or coming up with the timely basket they're up by 11 that's been the most for any team so far today Schmidt on the sidecar pass back out to Mafia Schmidt and he is and fouled that is and he will go to the line look at that pass so if you can get a replay on Mafia there just his ability to go behind the net there with the right hand and get that in with authority again there there's zip on that ball anytime he's passing it as and Ralph will be checked out here by that of Ethan Bogan, the junior. But you see, look at this. Gets the double whip over the shoulder there. Spot on the money, and he gets a chance for a three-point play. Schmidt. Ice veins. Ten-point lead. 2.28 left in this third quarter of play. And the dramatics of the Galaxy of Stars is about to align itself here going towards the fourth quarter. Could Laval pull off the biggest win? and their program history. Still sticking with that 2-3 zone. They've not gone back to man-to-man -man in, since the early stage of the third quarter. That is short from Elizabeth. Recovered and now going forward is the UVic Vikings. Usman Diawara in the game for the first time. Provide fresh legs. Robinson from the free throw line. Back heel up in the air. Last touch by Uvic. Good contest there. Just a miss on the play and one that for Robinson he's going to think back on but Mafia Ralph 28 no one else getting it going really Robinson at seven then you look at the other side the Coleman 11 on the bench but Joseph the Elf have eight apiece and then you got a couple others at seven and six so team effort it's a complete one by Laval. Fiorara he's short a quick one and done for Laval early in the shot clock and now it is Uvic on the run here comes Robinson down the right wing on the spin Robinson and he cannot get the conclusion of desire. Diawara back on the run. And he is fouled. And he will go to the line for two free throws. Who's my Diawara had two assists against UCAP. Has made 18 threes this year, 42 field goals, 20 assists. And now at the line for the first time today. Uh, Ethan Bogue's not going to like that one because he had him in terms of positioning. And then he slid by him and he slid outside and created that hip contact. And our free throw well short push to the left side on that one. They're now one of five from the mark compared to 87 percent, 13 of 15 Chose for the visitors. He chose the wrong golf club in that one. He's one for two. Gets it back up now to uh, 54. You just wonder. You, you wonder when Vic's going to go on a run at some point. You know, having seen this team multiple times over the year, the elite scoring proudness this team has. You're just like it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time, but. The time still hasn't come yet. The ability and imagination for Ubik. Still time in this ball game. Robson. Smith trying to seal up on the inside. Good job defensively. Robson for three. 
front rim. Rebounder right back to Sidhu Saul. And a quick hands to Robson. He is wiry. And a foul right there as Sidhu Saul's blushes will not be spared on that as Robson's still going hard late in this first third quarter play. You have to. I mean, there's 6 of 25 for the land beyond. Now that's 24%. So the second chance opportunities are going to be huge for them at this point. So the most important thing, we saw this in little blips at the end of the first half. So you see him throw his body on the line there, then the tie up on the ankles. And then, ooh, he almost got sacked there too. He's lucky he didn't hit him in the uh, Another feel me good spot. Yeah, the uh, forbidden zone. Yeah. Right now, Robson at the free throw line. Making the first one, and now 54-46 lead. One minute left in this third quarter of play. You see Lacombe, by the way, on the end of the bench there, just riding the bike, just staying warm, bidding his time there. You'll see him at the top right of your screen on the inbound there. I wonder if that's the Peloton out there. And here is Steve Joseph. 2-3 zone again for Uvic. It has worked well of late. And now Joseph trying to break through this dam, and he does with a teardrop. He's been killing them all evening in that free throw area of the pull-up jumper. And then sometimes he'll hesitate and think about going into the lane, but that's just his been his spot. He's found it all evening. Here's a three. Rebound, Diawara. They could hold for the last shot. It is a one-second difference with the big and small clock. And he's called for the travel. And right now, for Nathan Grant, he needs that uh, third quarter break because he needs to get these guys relaxed because they're a little bit twitchy right now. Well, uh, twitchy, but I mean, over ambitious potentially with what they're asking from themselves. You know, they're staying the course. They've got a nine point lead at this point. Just doing a little too much at times, but another former branded Bobcats player in that of Nathan Graham played 06 to 11. He's making an impact here in his team, not playing like an eight seed looking like a real threat in this tournament. You want a little history with Nathan Gatt and I? Same high school. And here is Robson trying to fend off Baba Yao. Help from Sadu Saul for three. Lacking the conviction. And a better finish coming through at the death, courtesy of Arnett. And you have to warn it, that might be a difference in this fourth quarter as we go into the fourth quarter. Laval 56, Victoria 49. And here's a replay from that last play. Well, you see there just Mwanza wasn't sure about the box out there. And the freshman gets killed with a freshman mistake there. You see how big that is for the psychology of the Vikings. You're watching the 2024 Men's Sports National Championship presented by Michelob Light. And here's another highlight right there from Elizabeth on the three-point shot earlier in the third quarter. Yeah, it's just the ball movement again. The, the story of the day has been points in the paint for the Rouge Or, and they continue to play that game 24 to 14. They're winning that category. And the Vikes, you know, the age-old adage, you live and die by the three. Well, they have not been thriving at this point. It's plays like that by Joseph, hesitation in the lane, and they continue to find their way inside, and then the odd outside look as you see the splash three here off centered and you see there and again this team talk is the biggest one for both teams for craig bocap in his 21st season as head coach of the university of victoria looking to get them back to that pinnacle of canadian dominance and for laval trying to put themselves back into that conversation of being a quebec power and perhaps getting one game closer towards the national title game on Sunday night. And right now, in the final house that we have here, you are watching the 2024 U Sports National Men's Final Eight, presented by Nicola Wright on CBC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all.
Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back here, live action. But before we get to that, don't forget, it is a 2024 U-Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. It's headed to the campus of McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario on March 14th and 17th. Turning packages and single game tickets are available now. Click on the QR code at, at the bottom of your screen and visit modernsca slash tickets to order your tickets today. The 2024 U-Sports Women's Volleyball Championship in Hamilton, Ontario. Chase the glory. Time for Mafia to start chasing some buckets. He's got 17, but 7 of 19 from the field. He's got to lead all scores, Lacombe and Joseph at 11 and 10, respectively. And now, in the final 10 minutes of this game, it's almost like a daily double for either side to try and win this matchup. Could Laval do it? And Elizabeth does it! Triple penetration again, just the key there, and then a little slip on the back door for two. He's looking to provide a sucker punch here against Uvic. Give and go, Robson against Elizabeth. Robson too quick. Rebound, Pereira, and that ball is sent up to Mont Saint Anne. And Joseph on the spin, he's all by himself. Will he go for it? And well defended by Robson, out of bounds it goes as Robson breaks through the tape. And he will uh, defer possession back to Laval as they will get 19 left in the shot clock. Theoretically, they haven't yet in terms of that points barrier, but physically. .usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back. Don't forget, if you want tickets to this weekend, of course, you can get tickets and head on by to the Laval website, to the U-Sports website. And don't forget, March 15th and 17th is the men's volleyball championship that we'll have as well next weekend. And a lot going on in and around the world of sports here in Canada. We know Ottawa's in. We know Queens is in. So if those fans want to make their way up to Quebec City, it's only a four and a half hour drive from where they are to the provincial capital of Quebec. Yeah, you wonder how many, in terms of the ticket sales, in terms of the promotion of social media, what they'll be doing overnight to pack the building in here. But you talk about packing the building, they keep being this 2-3 zone. This place is going to be exploding for a semifinal. Tomorrow. Mawaz explodes! No good. Rebound right back to you, Vic. Contested look there. Now you see a different game. Transition out and running. A little more desperate from the Vicks right now, or the Bikes, with 7.25 to go. Repelled away. Lerizier now back out to Joseph. Plenty of time for late drama. Could Uvic pull off? Be seismic the transition here. Moanza and working his way through and the putback. Wembe. That's good. Smith had to come over and help at the end of that. Diego Mafia has the ball just gets sealed on the outside of the paint there. Mafia. Split away. A deluge of red on Mafia. Working the byline. Mafia, the hottest property in U Sports. Cheeky in class in that play. He's the quietest 19 I've ever seen at 8 of 20 from the field now. Looked over to the officials for the and one call, too. It's Joseph rims out. Wembe denied. Ralph again, spot on the money with the block. And he's to become a second half show here. Elias Ralph. Quietly, Elias Ralph has done at both ends of the court with Mafia idle with 19. And the quick hands, Mawanza's got one man to beat in Robson in a one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. Use the forearm and that'll be a charge. I don't know why he's asking why that call is even being made. He looks to the officials like, I can't believe this is being called, but you're not going to get a more It's a right call. I mean, you're not going to get a more blatant, obvious call. It was slow motion, he extends. I, I love when players do this having played myself, but... What else are you going to ask at that point? I mean, what call are you looking for? Yes, he's sliding with you, but he looks confused as to what he did wrong. We're 20, we're 20 rows up from the court, and we saw from here. Lions. I felt that from up here. And right now, it remains an 11-point lead. That could be a massive swing here for Uvek. Ralph rims out. Rebound Schmid. 
in the jungle. In for two. That's a four-point swing right there for Juve. He did that a lot in the Can West Championships as well as Nathan Grant calls the timeout, but Smith's second chance opportunity in the lead down to nine. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Final Eight presented by Michelob Light and Green Shield on CBC Sports. Stay tuned. Laval's up 62-53. Welcome back here, Uvic and Red Inc. down by nine, and they're gonna have to start rolling the dice here. And who's with intent in this fourth quarter? And they don't have much racetrack to work with here, Greg. They have to get some points and a plethora of stops to get themselves a chance. Well, I mean, you look at the top three scores for this team: Mafia, Ralph, and Robinson. Right now, the combined 12 of 37 from the field. That's not a winning formula if you're Victoria for a team that is. Number one in points per game at 92 points a scored a game. They only give up 73 a game. So they're right around that mark there, but the efficiency offensively has been sublime to say the least. Mafia holds the record for most threes in a career, and now they'll need those threes. Lacombe back in, which is great news for Laval. Two three zone for Ubik. Joseph back over. Mwanza. Well played. And here's a chance. That's for Georges in for two, and now it becomes a little bit trickier for Laval, up by seven. Test for Georges again, five points per game, first and assist to turnover ratio, active hands on the read there off the initial set. That's for Georges, absolutely sublime in that play. And here is Duf, and he's fouled, and will go to the line. Schmidt on the foul. But I think Duke would have liked the, the hoop and the harm as opposed to two free throws. Yeah, he's had an active night, though. Four, six from the field. He's already got 11 rebounds to his name as well as eight points. So he could get into that Tim Hortons old-fashioned double-double with a pair of free throws here. And the shooter's touch. It is held up there, but the Laval wins. Was able to knock that one in from the Mount, Mount St. Anne area. Two for two, and now they are up by nine with 5.18 left. Third player in double figures, Joseph at 12, Lacombe at 11, Dioff at 10. Open Schmid over Duf. No good, rebounded by Elizabeth. Lacombe on four personals. And that's pushed out by Robson, who's been absolutely telescopic with his arm length. He's taken away passing lanes. And he's been a live wire for Uvic so far today. Uh, you talk about Elizovich, though, the first team all star, first in total rebounds game at just almost 12 a game, and he's been huge. And though the rebounding battle has been steady at 38 37, the ability to negate offensive boards for Victoria has been huge for this team defensively. Lacombe on the dribble. Nowhere to go, but back out into orbit to Steve Joseph. Joseph! And one! Smith laid on the switch there, then he had the inside track, and it's not much of a foul, but it's enough to draw the contact in the end. One opportunity now, they're up to 11 point lead, but we see right here, he's gonna slip underneath there, but then the inside track, and he has that right hand follow through on the backside, and the left one as he goes up into the lane. Joseph hitting that free throw. Last night at the awards bank, it was all Uvic, and right now they need those awards to carry them to, the, to this victory here. They're down by 12. The average is 12 a game. Joseph up to 15. Robinson! And he's fouled by Duf. And uh, again, if you're Nathan Grant, uh, the Pepto-Bismol might be his option of drink right now, given that this clock is not going fast enough. And for you, Vic, it's going too fast. I mean, if you're the Rouge or you're playing with Hell's Money, but... The confidence this team just exuberates at this point is they have not backed down at any single point. They've continued to hold the elite scores off with 2.46 to go. 2.46 left. That is the mark for Laval. As you see for the replay right here from Lacombe, the three-pointer going in. 
and they got Laval ready, ready to put Uvic on the sword. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National Eight presented by Michelob Light on CBC Sports. Welcome back here. The scoreboard is correct. It is Laval 70, Uvic 59. 2.46 left in this game. And I was thinking about the uh, the immortal Tim McAuliffe, who has, been, who has been the voice of this sport for many years. He's called some great ones, and this might be up there in terms of the teams involved. It is David versus the Goliath. And David looking like Goliath in this matchup. Well, it hasn't been one stone, but many stones flicked by the Laval Rouge or over time that has inflicted the damage at this point. But you're going to tell me coming into this game that in the dying stages, they've hit more three pointers. And that's one extra seven to six so far against the Vikes. I'd say you're crazy, but maybe miracles do happen. Robinson trying to create a miracle, and he does. Going to the line. You see the dark arts of basketball presented by Ronaldo Robson as Duf will come in on four personal fouls as they lead a bit more size in the paint presence. And with 2.34 left, Juvik is still in this game. Well, they've got three now with three fouls between the Clom Duf and the Lozovic. So you see the fist pump and how much that meant to Robinson there and his team. And anytime again you stop the clock, it's your friend. And that time the free throw wasn't his friend. Good tip though by Ralph there. And unfortunately it goes off of Robson, who was a bit perplexed. He's just got to be careful not to get teed off here as he wanted that call, but good job in terms of active officiating, just allowing him to air it out for a second, talking to him, giving him a little shoulder tap or touch on the hip there, and just calming him down. And here is a calming presence in Steve Joseph. Joseph almost trapped, is trapped. Breaks it through, Elizabeth. And Laval now trying to play clock, keep away. Joseph's got a split. Elizabeth in, and one. Just the right basketball play. They keep looking to Joseph, and they want to pressure him. This guy has been pinnacle all evening. He's been decisive in cutting up the defense there. But the ability to do that is a big reason why. And he makes the right pass on the inside. And Wow, that was huge. That was very subtle, but they had the music play during the free throw there for the home side. It caused a miss. A three for Robinson. A four-point swing. And now it's a 72-64 lead. And Nathan Grant wasn't happy about something from his team's transition defense. He's up to 16 now. Mafia's got 21. They've got the top two scorers in this game. Laval's got four players in double figures, led by Stevie Joseph, 15 points. Five rebounds, six assists. Easily the player of the game if they walk off with what would be one of the biggest episodes in modern U Sport history. Plenty of time for late drama. Joseph around Robinson. And they want to slow it down. They want to play that squeeze out Look offense. How low that crossover was. Elizabeth, Joseph. Man to man look now for Uvic. Here's Elizabeth. Lacombe, extra pass. No, he keeps it himself. Lacombe. No. Rebound. Elizabeth to do 14. And oh my, a pantomime reaction as Robson got knocked over. And Elizabeth will be called for that. And that will put him out of the game, most importantly. I yeah. mean, you talk about a guy who's ready to get an offensive board and potentially putting this game away. They're not going to like the call here, but see it tipped around by Ralph initially. But then again, just that extension pushed off with the left hand there. And did he sell it a little bit? Yes. Did he extend with the left hand? Absolutely at the end of the day. So he's going to have to sit this one out. And 
Final buck 42 is going to have to watch from the sidelines. This is the most nervous time if you're a Laval Rougier fan. This is an ultimate nervous time here if you're a UVic Viking fan. You score here too. You can run out a 24 defensive set and not be over aggressive. Robson. He's been the linchpin. Lacombe. Giveaway. No Mafia from Victoria. Blast that through. Fourth three pointer. I mean, I said he'd do that a couple times to the crowd. There's one. We're going to need a couple more. This game is still in the balance. Timeout was supposed to be called here, and you see Grant's got his blazer off. Joseph can't hit it. And now this could be the great escape here for Uvic. Mafia back with it. See, he's calling off the high low with Smith here, the pick and roll, trying to free up a shot. Look at here on him. Mafia splitting through, and he's got it. He won the end one call, but he gets everything else. And there's the arrow of this building momentarily. Diego Mafia, five straight. A couple of frustrating non calls or calls if you're the Laval Rouge or faithful, but Nathan Grant isn't the only one taking off his shirt right now. That blazer, he's a little bit of a heat check in this building as the bikes have stormed back in the late stages here. You see the three made by Lacombe, which he thought might be the point of emphasis and a dagger, but. But Steven's been lurking around all evening, and he wondered when it was going to come for the Victoria Bikes. And a 2016 lead here in this fourth quarter, they've responded well. And now, you this is a, a, a very important time here in the dying embers of this game. And they're lucky. You saw that there. It's one too many times this evening where Ronaldo Robinson has been doing too much with the rock. He almost loses the handle. But you see Mafia there chasing him out to the three-point line. Does the correct read, and he goes inside for two the hard way. He wants the extra call, hasn't got it. He might be working the officials at this point. You don't be surprised if he gets a potential and one opportunity if the attention is drawn from him on the three-point line. So. A three-point lead, what this affords you right now is you can ride out a defensive possession right now if you're Victoria. Just for the love of God, if you're Craig Bocamp and company, you're probably saying keep the ball out of Stevie Joseph's hands as much as possible. Well, Lacombe might be the one who might be the quarterback of this play looking for the killer pass. Lacombe into the plus territory. Robson but wants him, and now Lacombe takes it. Lacombe. Twisting, turning, Wembe back out to Joseph. They want to calm it down with 10 left in the shot clock. Just burn clock. Patience, patience. Joseph round one. Joseph looking, looking, nowhere. Wembe denied. Wembe! And right now for Laval, they are looking like they are the architects of their own downfall as they are full of angst and it's now become fizzy skinny. And we are one three-pointer away from a tie game. Well, you got two shooters and Ralph. And Diego Mafia should be a pick and roll situation. They'll go with Smith instead. Mafia went beyond support. Here's Mafia for the tie. Denied. Smith can't finish. Rebound. Duke. They got a foul here. Joseph fouled by Ralph. 12.4 left. To make it a two score game, Steve Joseph with the biggest free throws of his career. The Mafia thought he got hand checked there on the follow through as well, but I'm surprised they didn't go to Diego Mafia and Elias Ralph in a pick and roll situation. Instead, they've gone to Smith, who's been the calling card underneath the glass there, but now you hear the quietness of this crowd on the free throw. I think that explains the reaction of the crowd. It's a two score game now for Laval. Vision, execution, they're now up by five. Robinson for three. One point five left, and that is it. It's going to be a long, a long 24 hours for the Victoria Bikes, who have been number one for a large part of this season. The favorite coming into this tournament. They ran the West, they got through the juggernaut for the Winnipeg Westman, won on their home turf. And now they walk into Laval, the number eight seed coming up 
with not a Christmas miracle, but by a large accounts, a franchise or a university altering win. Milan's at the line. Get it. Welcome to March Madness. Raval, victorious, 75-69 over Uvic. Delight for the Rougiar. Despair for the Vikes as they will go home without a goal and in search of a national title. Emotions partner in the noise says everything about what this game means at the end of the day. We talk about a loud crowd, you talk about trusting the process. Laval knew they had an opportunity coming into this year, no matter what happened in the regular season, they were playing for this tournament. And you talk about statement wins, that is a statement win. That is a program defining win for Nathan Grant, who's looking for that moment, and he's got it. I think this building was loud tonight, too. <laughs> oh, buddy, you wait till tomorrow night. Saturday night party in Quebec City is going to start in this building. You thought this is, good. This is loud. You're right. It's going to be solid tomorrow night. The balance in it. And here we go. Mark Antoine Gerpi with the player of the game. Victoria, the play of the game for the Vikes, the numero 14, and number 14, Reynaldo Robinson. He did as much as he could, but came up short at the most important time, the Uvic Vikes. And 16 points, 311 from the field, 9 of 11 from the charity stripe. Mafia finishes with 26, Ralph with 11. Et le joueur du match du côté du Rouge et le numéro 5, ici, Joseph! If you know about Steve Joseph's career, he was coached by one of the Quebec greats, Andy Herzog, who said Steve Joseph may be small in size, but he is the toughest, you know what, in Quebec basketball. I mean, he's the biggest player on this court, both sides, and probably the biggest player in this tournament so far. 17 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. Kid did it all, and he's facilitated, and he orchestrated their half court beautifully. He dissected and disrupted them offensively and defensively, the bikes, and most people wouldn't think this, but guess what, partner? You called it March Madness. It is for a reason. The number one seed is gone. The host, David, move on another day. And for you, Vic, no matter what they do now, it, you're right, it's going to be a long plane ride home to Victoria, B.C. We still got one more to go, partner. We do. We have one more to go. It is Dalhousie against Brock. And what a game. We'll, we need to take a breather here because this game was emotionally charged up. Laval did not relent. They went blow for blow, and they got the knockout shot late in this matchup, losing Elizabeth, and there was no fear or intimidation from them against the Big Bikes. It's just a testament to what Nathan Grant has done with this program as you see Lacombe go into lane for two. It was their calling card all evening, 32 points in the paint at the end of the day and just defensively getting it done. You know, Mafia had his 26, Robinson at 16, but they're able to hold the course and, you know, that film study they put in and those moments of intensity, they did not slip, they did not falter despite the foul trouble. They stood tall, and they reward the home faithful with a massive win. Coming up next, Dow against Brock, the final of the four today. On day one, we have the biggest upset, perhaps in U Sports history. Laval, who were 6-10 and 10 during the regular season, one and done in the Quebec playoffs, are now one game away from playing for the national title. Stay tuned here from the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight. Presented by Michelob Blight on CBC Sports. We'll see you soon. It's that moment again. 
the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo.